thanks for the, the opportunity. Uh, I would like to start my, my talk with this quote, saying for every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about the nanostream. This platform is designed to directly in type of nucleic acid, can be microRNA, RNA, or DNA. Uh, directly means you don't need any cDNA synthesis or amplification step. Uh, it's highly, uh, I'm going to focus on mRNA today, expression. It's highly multiplex assay. Uh, you can profile up to 800 genes. It's a probe-based system. And in terms of the workflow, it's so easy to do. And it's very straightforward. And usually people profile 12 samples at a time. <coughs> uh, we obtain, uh, when we obtain this data set, we need to get this da data normalized. Why we need that? We need to adjust for uh, sample loading differences, which is quite common in gene expression uh, data set. We need to adjust for variation in assay efficiency. Uh, different reagents, if we use different reagents, sometimes cause uh, patch effects and some other unwanted variation. Uh, the key message about, uh, for my talk is here. Whenever that you use a normalization, you need to assess your normalization. You need to have some evidence to show that your normalization works. For, this, uh, for my study, I've got three levels of evidence. I call it the weak, intermediate, and strong evidence. We, we started statistical plots like RLE and PCA. I will show it in a, I will explain in a minute. And we call it weak evidence. They are good, but they are not enough. And uh, because we have some technical replicates, a similarity between technical replicates can be another uh, kind of evidence. And if your normalization can reveal a known biology, it would be very strong evidence. We need to show this evidence that our normalization works. <coughs> uh, OK, I'm going to talk about nanostring uh, normalization approach. It put that the company provides a software called Ensolver, and we have got one R package. Uh, called nanostring norm to do this kind of analysis. If you are interested to, do, to know what's going on here for this uh, uh, normalization, we start with the background correction using nanostring negative spiking controls. We start with positive, uh, uh, using positive control for positive control normalization using positive spiking controls. These two controls are uh, useful for removing uh, variation which is associated with the, uh, with the platform. And then for adjusting for sample to sample loading variation, we need to have a, uh, using housekeeping gene normalization. In total, we've got 84 different combinations of these tests. And in the default option is uh, mean plus two standard deviation for background, geometric mean for positive, and housekeeping normalization. Uh, to assess the performance of uh, nanostring normalization, I look at different data set. The first one is in-house data set. We have got the DNA repair gene expression. And uh, I look at the different published data set. You can see this data, uh, paper published in 2016 and two other science paper published in 2014. I look at this uh, normalization or normalized data set. For the sake of, uh, in total, we, uh, we, you know, we, look, uh, we uh, assess 6,000 samples. For the sake of time, I'm just going to take you through these two examples. If you, if you are keen to know what's happening for other papers, you can look at our paper, which will be available on BioArchive in the next few days. Okay, let's start with the first example, give you a little bit of information. We have got the 146 uh, samples, 60 normal tissue data was generated using 15 nanostring cartridges. You can see here a majority, majority of cartridges has got 12 samples. We have got 600 genes, 13 housekeeping genes, and nanostring uh, uh, negative and spike, uh, positive spiking controls. Uh, it's great that we have got some technical replicates. They are extremely useful to estimate the batch to batch uh, variation. Here is a technical replica, uh, replicate location plot. Each, point, each two points connected to one line is a one technical replicate. For example, in, uh, okay, in batch one, I've got this sample, which is repeated in batch two. They are very, very useful for, for estimating unwanted variation. Uh, we usually start to look at the row data set to, uh, uh, using box plot. So easy, my data, uh, genes are in rows and sampled are in columns. This is uh, all the 166 samples. Each color represents one batch. And in each box is for one patient. I've got 600 measurements. But sometimes box plot is not powerful enough, can be misleading. We have got another good uh, plot, which is we call it relative low expression plot, RLE. Is it the same box plot, but we center the genes. For each gene, we subtract that gene medians across all samples, and we do a box plot. This RLE plot is very sensitive to to reveal unwanted variation. If you look at, is it the same box plot? In the y-axis, we have got RLE. In the x-axis, we have got the samples. 
a good normalization method usually uh, have a, uh, uh, we call it good uh, RLE plot. All medians of box plots should be sent around zero, and boxes should be similar to each other. It shows that, that your normalization uh, works. <coughs> uh, you can see that this is a row count. This data needs to be normalized. Uh, that was a row count. When I applied the default option of nano string uh, normalization, that is a RLE plot, you, ca you can see that medians are not sent around zero, batch 15, which is a color in, in blue, stands out, and a lot of outlier samples. It's one evidence, it's not compelling. Uh, if you look at the uh, similarity between technical replicates, you can see sample one was profiled in two different rounds. These are 600 measurements. That similarity between technical replicates is not very good enough. And how about the known biology? <coughs> uh, in this context, we know that there is a positive correlation between two genes, the RL1 and ERCC1. This is a uh, moderately positive control, a positive correlation. We saw the same correlation in other, other uh, paper. As we are so skeptical, we, we checked it again in another paper here. It's a microarray. We look at that, those genes, there is a positive correlation between two, uh, these two. We know that is a very well-known <coughs> biology. When you look at the nanostring normalization, it gives me a very uh, different pattern, which is negative correlation between these two genes. And uh, is, is, is not the right answer. Uh, <coughs> having a bad RLE plot, not very good correlation between technical replicates and wrong biology, uh, uh, it motivated me to, to use another normalization method. Uh, you, may, you may wonder that I mentioned we have got 84 different normalization options. I just showed you one of the uh, options. How about the 80, other 83? I, I did all of 83 other options, and none of them was good enough. <coughs> And I look at the different other normalization methods like quantile, upper quantile, or combat, or TM in HR. Uh, they didn't work because these guys are in initially designed for RNA-seq or genome-wide uh, uh, platforms. Okay, that's why I, I, I use the RV package. There's a, a, a plenty of uh, normalization method here. I use RV3. We have got other options for, for different purposes. Uh, let's have a look at the result. If I want to briefly uh, say what we need for RUV3. You need a negative control genes, as a genes which are not affected with your biological factor of interest. We need have some control samples, technical replicate samples, biological replicates, and sometimes pseudo replicates uh, can be useful. And we need a positive control or known biology to check your normalization. Okay, that was the encounter normalization RV plot. Here is the RUV3. You've got all, all median center around zero, box bar very similar to each other. And for this kind of normalization, I use all genes as negative controls. Uh, I don't have time to explain why all genes as negative controls works, and using all technical replicates. And this is the similarity of technical replicates. I've got in the y, in the y axis a log ratio for uh, each pair of technical replicates. In the uh, uh, y x axis, I've got 70 technical replicates. You can see here that uh, from the light blue to navy, I've got the log ratio between each technical replicates. For example, this one, you can see that the nano string show very huge differences between technical replicates, which are we show very low uh, variation between, between uh, technical replicates, in all the uh, 17 duplicate samples. Uh, how about known biology? I just show you that the nano string uh, uh, gave me very wrong biology, and the RV3, we, we captured the right biology. We've got a good RLE plot, we've got a great similarity between technical replicates, and we reveal uh, known biology. That's a good method. To see the performance of nanostring or RUV3 on other data set, as I said, I, I look at a different data set, published data set. I'm gonna take you through quickly on this uh, published data set. In the next few slides, I'm gonna show the normalized data set which is published in this paper. <coughs> okay, I call it Plequin, is the first author of this paper. Uh, in terms of study design, they have got the 17, 700 genes, 15 housekeeping genes, again, nanostring, negative and positive controls. Uh, they profile 1,000 samples across three distinct reagents. They were out of reagent, reagent, they ordered another reagent, they were out of reagent again, and they ordered another reagent. Different reagents cause the batch effects here. Okay, this is, each box is one, one, one batch. They call it batch two, batch three, batch four. And here's the biology. Uh, they've got a different disease status, and the main tissue is colon, rectum, and terminal ileum. Okay, Bi biology is, 
is fairly evenly distributed across the batches. We don't have any obvious confounding effects here. And uh, they've got some technical replicates. You can see again, this is my technical replicate location plot. And uh, we have got replicates in the batch and across batches to estimate the unwanted variation. Okay, I'm gonna show you the, the Plequin normalized data set. I just downloaded from GO as a data set that they published in, in their paper. This is already the plot. Uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the x-axis, I've got 1,000 box plot. If I use a usual uh, normal box plot, it's gonna be very ugly. What I'm showing you here, I just highlighted medians of uh, box plots and show you interquantile range. You can see that, that, that medians are not centered around zero. It shows that there is something wrong with this normalization. If I look at the PCA, you can see this is my principal component analysis. You can see that all batch, all samples from batch three are captured by PCA2. And as I, as I just showed you, that this, this is not a biology, it's just batch effects. Because if I look at the colon rectum ileum, which is main tissues in this study, the batch tree has got a different uh, it's a mix, a mixture of these tissue in the batch tree. The, the batch effects, which is batch number three, remains in the normalized data set. <coughs> uh, how these batch effects can do, uh, influence downstream analysis? If you look at the three different groups in the colon cancer in colon uh, tissue in this study. If you look at these genes, in the y-axis I've got expression of these genes, and in the x-axis I've got different groups, you can see between healthy and you see an inflamed group, this gene uh, is, is differentially expressed. The, the, the black line is a mean. And this, this shift in the mean is because of batch effects. It's not a, it's not a, real, a real difference. And this is how the batch effect can, uh, can influence the analysis. We saw a lot of genes in this paper that are affected by these batch effects, and, and uh, is not a real signal. Uh, uh, we, I, I look at the row count, I, I renormalize the row count uh, using RV3, and again, I use all genes as a negative control genes, and using all technical replicate samples to, to see uh, what's the performance of RV3. Okay, that was the, the dead RV plot. As I said, the medians are now centered around zero, and this is the RV plot of, of RV3. All medians are centered around zero. I need to highlight this point again. Early plot is a weak evidence. You can't just rely on early plot. It's good, but it's not enough. <clears throat> I need to show you the, uh, some biology. In terms of the PCA, as, as I just showed you, the, the, the batch effects remained in the day, day normalized data set. But in the RUV3, we, we mixed the batches. You can, you can't see any, any uh, Batch, but you, get, you can see two, two obvious clusters, and we, we cover based on tissue, that's a biology. We, we captured the alien, uh, uh, we separated alien from terminal alien. We know that they should be separated by gene expression. Uh, what happens for that genes which were uh, differentially expressed? Uh, they, they reported that this gene is differentially expressed, and we said that no, this gene is not differentially expressed. What they, what they mentioned that was just noise. <coughs> And just to, to, to make sure that it's real biology, we look at another paper. This is a microarray study. They've got the same disease status. We look at these genes across the same uh, groups. And that gene in this paper showed that this gene is not differentially expressed. What they, they reported, and one can call it as a differential express analysis, was just a noise. That was a real signal. <coughs> Okay, just uh, was one, one example for, for RUV3. Uh, we, we had two other, two science papers in our paper. We, we, we explained in detail what's happening for them uh, because they, they had this quite the same, the same problems. Uh, uh, I should say that none of is accurate platform. It's a reliable platform, but its data analysis needs to be normalized. And, and as I hope I convinced you that the selection of normalization can greatly influence your downstream analysis. Uh, I just show you some great uh, uh, tools. It's easy to do. All these plots are included in RV package, like RLA, PCA, they are very useful to reveal unwanted variation and to check your normalization. And I think RV methods are well designed to, to remove the uh, batch effect or unwanted variation from the high throughput data set. And uh, I'm gonna highlight it again, the including negative positive control genes is very, very crucial for your for your study, in for all the study, not only expression, and using technical replicates is, is very important for your study design. I just want to uh, acknowledge all wonderful people uh, in this project, my, my wonderful supervisor, Terry Speed, 
and they, they developed these great REV packages and other people uh, happy to take questions. Thank you. I think that to repeat your question, uh, the question was uh, how hard it is to reproduce or take that the, the published data set. Uh, for that two, uh, the, the, the pre-queen data set was quite easy, but, but for that two science papers, it took me one year. Yeah, to, to, I did a detective work because uh, it was so hard to reproduce the results and to see what is, what is wrong and what is uh, not wrong. And it took me two year, one year for that two papers to, okay, and what they have done is not correct, and this is the correct answer. Because the problem is they didn't explain everything in detail. They say, okay, we have data, because it's a huge, huge study, 2,000 samples, a five years uh, study, and it was really hard to, to reproduce all the results. Yeah, I had, I, sometimes I had, to, I had to read paper 10 times to find some very minor <laughs> point in the paper to help me to understand the, the analysis. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think it's, it's a good question. It's really difficult. It's, uh, uh, we did a quite good uh, uh, thing because we, we let them know. We send an email to all authors of these papers. Okay, we, we, we know that you have done something wrong or there's something problems, and uh, this is our improved uh, uh, normalization. But uh, because I'm going to make it available and put it on Biograph in the next few days, but I'm expecting to, to see a lot of, you know, comments or aggressive comments, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit hard to say this thing because, because NanoString is a good platform, but uh, the way that they advertise it, uh, it, it, they said it doesn't need any, good, any complicated normalization, just use Ensolver or something like this. It's gonna work, but you analyze 6,000 samples and it's not gonna work. <laughs> I, 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 I tried all of them, almost all of them, but they didn't work because I think they, they are initially designed for RNA-seq. Because in this, it's not a high throughput, it's a medium throughput in terms of number of genes. You can just profile up to 800 genes. But I tried all of them, almost all of them, but they didn't work. Yeah. Thank you.